you've got a big following of now your fans, not just Rob fans, but people that have seen you on the world Papa tours. Pete. Papa, Papa Pete. Pete, yeah, your Twitter handle. I've, and, been, I've uh, become Papa Pete. Yeah, that was through David Lloyd. God bless him. Bumble, the cricket commentator. Bumble, David Bumble, yeah. He started me doing that. Oh, he put in, you on Twitter in New Zealand. Ah, right, okay. When you've been out there watching, well, you've been on tour I went, with Rob, and then you're watching the I cricket. I went to New there. Zealand. I played a lot of cricket, and I went to New Zealand, and I got it when I, when, when I was there. There was a one day international game, Australia New Zealand, twenty twenty. And I went and sat down in the old, in the in, with the spectators, and I'm I'm sitting with Nasser Hussein, who was a cricket commentator. Just drop that one in. Thank you. He's by the sound of me, so I told him who I was, and I told him I was a big fan of Bumbles <clears throat> for numerous reasons. He said he's on a commentary if you want to go and meet him. So he took me to meet Bumble, and Bumble was very knowledgeable about North South cricket, about my area, and people that I played cricket with here. And we had a half an hour talking about cricket. And uh, the following day, uh, I get a lot of phone calls from cricketing friends of mine saying, Bumble's been on Twitter this morning saying he met you last night. I said, well, it's strange enough, I think I met him. You know, it's, it's the other way around, actually. But very nice of him. So we've got a techie lad on, uh, on tour with us called Leo, and he knows everything about videos, he knows all about this. But, you know, so that's what he does, that's his job. And he's technically very brilliant. So he does. He looks after my computer. So I said to Leo, "Can you get me on Twitter so I can just say hello to Bumble, and say thank you for what a great night it was last night?" So that this is two years ago, just over two years ago, and uh, he got me onto Twitter. I thank Bumble. Now I've got nothing to. I'm sitting in hotel bedrooms all day, aren't I? So I suddenly became the Twitter king of the Western world. You f absolutely are. I mean, and you're on there on a daily basis. Several times a day. And yeah. You've got your own following. You've got I've, Rob's I've got, following. I've got, I've got 10,000 followers. I know. You've upped my <coughs> It's just amazing. And <laughs> I, it's, um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I've enjoyed being From on. From all over the world, you've got people yeah. messaging you in every language. If and... I, yeah, in every language. Yeah, if, no, if, just... if, I, if I don't go on for any length of time, people... Don't wonder what's happened to you. <laughs> yeah, are, you are you okay? Yeah, I saw. They say, hello, Pete, you have a message today. Yeah, hello, I know. Pete, yeah. where are I, Papa Pete? Where, where are you? Yeah. I wake up in the morning and think, what shall I do today? It's crazy. It's amazing, isn't it? That's, it's a nice way to keep in touch with everybody. Everybody can see where you are, what you're I doing. I tell you what, in this crazy world we're living in right now with this virus, mm. uh, it's kept me occupied in the daytime. Keeps you busy. Yeah. I, I've met a lot of people through Yeah. Uh, and, and people that you'd maybe lost touch with, even from Stoke. Yes. Just people that you haven't e seen People that I haven't seen for quite a while. Yeah. And, and people that, uh, yeah. People that can't get out because of the pandemic. Spot on. So I know that obviously you did the world uh, tours many times and lots of private gigs and you've flown in jets, I remember messaging you that I was in Athens doing a show yep. and you were in Athens doing a show yep. and I just said I've just come off the stage and you said oh well we're already in the jet on the way home yeah, we're and on you were going to be back in England before I got out of the dressing room. That, yeah that's right. So you were doing some fancy stuff but surely I know that for a British act like yourself Palladium is the best the bee's knees. But what, come on, Vegas? I mean you're the well, biggest Frank Sinatra <laughs> fan I know. I know well Vegas we haven't mentioned. So let's mention Vegas then. Well, I get a call from Rob and he said, uh, are you sitting down? He said, yes. He said, uh, go for this one. We do in Vegas. Well, that uh, the Palladium is number one. For, for the UK stuff, yeah. Of for course. us, yes, of course. But Vegas is number one for the world. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's the capital of entertainment in the world. Entertainment and for swing, and of course. How many people have not done it? It's like me. It's like me playing cricket at Lords. Yes. Um, not many people are in, in the business, mm. top entertainers, top acts, yeah, have not done Vegas. And when I first walked out on there, and it's only a little theatre. The win. The win. The win. It's just a theatre. It's, it's got about one thousand five, I think, uh, which is small in comparison to Milton Keynes. Or yeah, I've done a hundred thousand in Mexico. Yeah. Just imagine a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand people. Sixty-six, seventy thousand is quite normal. Yeah, uh, that, that's you don't a, break a sweat. No, I never. I don't break sweat anyway. <laughs> um, one of the nicest comments ever made to me. I'll just get this one in. I've never been nervous. Uh, no, it's 
No I've, I've, I've sometimes been nervous when I've been on. <laughs> Not before I got on. No. When I realised I've been nervous in the northeast when they haven't been laughing. That, that's that's. Or me. nervous when we forgot our words. Oh, forgetting words, and uh, I've had my toes curl up inside my shoes at times, but not before I went on. But one of the nicest comments ever made to me was in. I remember it was in Cumbria, um, in Whitehaven, of all places. They had two cabaret clubs in Whitehaven many many years ago. It's only a little place. They had the Haven and they had the Cameo. And you used to do weeks there at Whitehaven. It's stuck in the middle, like Barrow in Furnace. Yes, like middle of nowhere. The 99 really. Club in Barrow. Egremont. Uh, yeah, Egremont. Yeah. yeah. It was it was crazy. We, we were weeks there. Anyway, this guy came over to him. He said, can I buy you a drink? And I said, yeah. And he said, I really enjoyed what you did. I said, thank you very much. He said, you make Perry Como look like a nervous wreck. Which, that's, I, I, get you. I want that on my tombstone. Yeah, you made Perry like Como it. look like an, that, I, I said, I said, I'll remember that for the rest of my life, I said. Because Perry was so laid back. He yeah. was just unbelievable. But you're, you're pretty much Mr. Laid Back as well. Yeah, but I, I thought, how nice that is. That's a lovely, lovely compliment. It's a nice accolade, isn't it? It's a lovely compliment. I mean, I've been backstage with you when the, the uh, overture has been playing and you're about to go on and we're still chatting about something that was on Coronation Street 10 oh, minutes ago yeah. and then da, 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 and you're da, da, on and boom switch. Yeah. you can switch like yeah. like nobody I know really from chatting well, and that's, backstage well that's nice I mean it's something I take for granted I just I never think about it really and you know if, if Rob had never been famous you've still been in the business the whole of your life and you must be the most unfamous but busiest person in showbiz because you have worked I, all your life. Lovely. I, I've kept myself under the radar. Under the radar. And I've done... Cue for a title of a, an album, I think. Yeah, <laughs> under the radar. 53 years. 53 years. I've been at it. 67, I became a pro. 67. And I've, I've managed to do all sorts of things. things there isn't that, many things that you haven't done. I think you've done every type of I've done, entertainment. I have, I, I, we haven't mentioned the movies. I've done, four, I've done five movies. Yes, well, we need to get on to the movies. Yeah, I remember <laughs> some of those. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that. <coughs> but, I mean, obviously, you did love The Win. You loved doing that, the, the Vegas the win. thing. The, the win, the, the Vegas was great. You would have been there now, right? well, just in June. We'd have you? done it again, and it not have been for the lockdown. Yeah, the yeah, lockdown. And that, but I think there might be something more coming next here's, year. Here's a little fact of life. I met the, some of the governors from the uh, the Wynn Hotel. People don't realise the enormity of the place. It's got eighteen thousand employees. Wow, eighteen thousand. That's and a one thousand about one thousand seater. Yeah, theater. Well, no, the the, the hotel casinos, has, the hotel, yeah, it's got everything. Everything. I mean, when you think. Yeah, yeah in, inside the hotel is a 1,500-seater theatre. And Rob will probably go back next year and, you know, pers- uh, the, the dates that were postponed, hopefully yeah, he'll get yeah, them, yeah. fit them in. Yeah. And I know that you said that you're going to retire this year, but, you know, keep us on our I, toes. There might be something just coming up. My plan, unfortunately, was scoopered because I planned to retire on June the 20th, or was it the 19th, at Port Vale Football Club. That was my plan to retire. Um, and Rob was doing a charity show for a local children's hospice. Don Louise. Don Louise. And uh, I was going to be doing the show, and that was my plan to bow out on that night. And, of course, it didn't come about because we were on lockdown. Well, then that's the only good thing about the pandemic, because it means that you've got one more show to do, mister. Well, I have retired. No, you've been, not. Uh, except for that one. Yeah, one more, one more. Uh, you've got to do it for the charity, come on. They might have to wheel me on. <laughs> I'll wheel you on. <laughs> yeah, you wheel me on. I'll yeah. wear feathers in a sequined outfit. Yeah, feather, you know, uh, yeah. It'll be, like the old days. Yeah, like we used to. <laughs> So let's I, talk about, come on, then we've, we've done all that then. I won't press you too much about that because I'd want i like to push you about next year and about never retiring ever. But let's, talk, lot, let's can, talk about can, your movies. Come on, we'll can, come back can to I just say, on, yeah, go Can on, I just say that you can. everybody says to me, you'll never retire. I will. I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have as well, but not that I want to. A lot, a, of, a, lot of we people, all have. a lot of people don't realise they've retired. They've retired, I mean, yeah. I, I have genuinely retired. Due to unforeseen circumstances, <laughs> we've all retired. Yeah, but yeah. So hopefully that will change. But yeah, yeah well, we hope, we hope at least another a little show out of you. You know, come out of retirement for the day or so. Movies. Movies, come on, tell right. us about all well, those movies this, you've done. This all happened to me. I have a friend who, in, in the world, whose uh, reputation is villainous. 
Gangster. And, and, uh, gangster. Uh, yeah, a celebrity gangster. And um, they were doing a, a movie of his life. Dave Courtney rang me, and uh, they're doing this movie of his life called Hell to Pay. And would I come and play a copper and, and arrest him? Oh, well, you know how to do that. I, I said, well, you got the right one for that. So he said, yeah, if you come down to London, round to the house. The story in the script was, well, there was, it, it was winged, it was uh, improvised. The story was that last night he's been out there causing mayhem. Uh, I think a lot of people got hurt and a lot of people got knocked about. And I come to see him with, mob handed with policemen, with uniform police. And we come and arrest him. He's sitting outside on his patio having his breakfast. When I turn up with these uniform bobbies, we surround the house and I go in and arrest him. And that's what, so that's what we're doing. So uh, I go down to London and uh, I've got two, two scenes in the movie. I, I arrest him, I go into his bedroom later with some uniform people, we find a gun in a locker. And I said, bingo, we've got him. And th that was all I did. I just did these two scenes where I tell him he's been arrested. He's got two ways of coming, the easy way or the hard way, which one do you want? And uh, I've got these people surrounding the place. And we do that, we do, the sh we do the shot. Do the other one. Then the movie's put together, then he's on Richard and Judy talking about the movie and they played a clip from it the bit the clip they played from it is my clip where i'm arresting him so um i get a phone call then from a producer um who works for central television They're doing a movie uh can i do an american accent and they've seen this clip on the and i said sure i can so I, yeah, I'll do on, we can talk it over and just, so I, I, I spoke American on the phone for a little while and just, just became an American for, she said, well, that sounds good enough. Uh, sounds good enough to me. <laughs> I don't know about Americans, but there you go. And so I went along to do, it wasn't an audition. I think they just decided it was going to be me. I, I fitted the part. So I had a two week part on a movie called, Help, uh, called um, The Perfect Coach with Ruby Turner. So, Fabulous Ruby Turner. Oh, she's, she was wonderful. And she was a waitress and I was an American and I was a bad guy uh, that needed to become good and she took me around and it was a psychological thing. And uh, so I did two weeks, so I got this perfect coach thing. Then the same people did another movie, they wanted another, I played another American. And the nice thing about this other movie that I did where I played another American, I don't know what it's called, I did two days filming in Nottingham. And you never got the title of the movie? I got the cash. I, I, I got the that's, check. That's, that's all you need. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. So, I don't know what it was called. And then I did another one called Silver Lining. <coughs> and then... What was that one about? Was it the same kind of thing? I was a barman. I, I, I ran a bar. and uh, Only a little part. Yeah. And I, I ran this bar and there's things going on in the bar. And then the last one I did was called, I did it two years ago, and that went to the film festival at Cannes, and it was called um, Me Too. Me Too, when I was a vicar or a priest. I remember you did that, yeah. I remember the vicar or priest, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I think I was a vicar. Well, you've done policeman, vicar, bad man. <laughs> bad man. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing much that you haven't done. No. So I enjoyed that. I, I, I do enjoy the discipline of, um, of filming, of filming and, yeah. and shows. I've got a thing about places, about this business. I enjoy places. I enjoy walking into theatres backstage. I feel at home. Yeah. I feel very much at home in television places. I don't feel out of place. And uh, I, I've just enjoyed being in the business I think. And you've done some TV shows have you? Have you done anything on TV other than these films? Have you done anything like I don't know Loose Women or anything like that? I've done Loose Women. I've done so many I can't even remember. You can't remember, remember. you've been I've done lo I, I, I was did series with Richard and Judy. Did loads of Richard and Judy. And I remember uh, you doing Hello Magazine. I remember Hello, you doing a big, uh, a big, big, big spread a, on a, Hello Magazine. Hello. That was when I was at Thorsby. At home at Thorsby yeah and they went it to was. your apartment and <laughs> 
your front room was this big they, they, <laughs> they did didn't they yeah yeah it was amazing I've done so many TV. You did some filming there, actually. There was a TV something you did at Thorsby. Do you remember? I did a documentary called documentary. R- Robbie Williams is My Son. That's right. And we that was 2001. Because we had the band and the dancers in it. Yeah. 2001, yeah. Yeah. Daisy Productions or something. Yeah. yeah I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Robbie Williams, My Son. Yeah. Uh, that, that was on Channel 5. Channel 5, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's been... I've managed. I'm really pleased. Because... It's a funny old business, our business. You get rec- I mean, I get recognised in Stoke anyway, which is, I get recognised at airports. For you will do now. I mean, of now, yeah. But I managed to stay below the radar, as I say. So you can have a good normal life. Yeah. And, and then I, still... I've knocked about with people. They've been instantly recognisable. And it's, it's, it has its moments, which is nice to be recognised. But it also has its moments when it's a, an inconvenience. Yeah. And... I can even go as far as to say, and there's different levels. And I, I thought it was wonderful. Uh, I played golf with, um, with na- name drop a little bit, Anton Deck. Anton Deck? Now, Anton Deck are instantly recognisable people. And they both said to me, we are instantly recognisable. We get our fair share of people coming over to us. But we didn't know what the difference was till we went out with Rob. Yeah, and then they saw the nightmare. The, he said the, the, the difference is enormous. Yeah. There's different levels of... Um, Accolades. Well, 